Uh, without further ado, let's get into it. And again, uh, another disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not uh, your father figure. Uh, don't trust me, anything I say. Uh, do your own research. This is just uh, my opinion. And uh, hopefully I can provide some value for you. But always, always do your own research. And also, if you're watching from the live stream or our recording, please uh, subscribe and hit the like button. It really helps us to get the good word out. So uh, Anton is uh, one of the board, board members. He has uh, crafted this awesome, awesome, awesome uh, presentation, which uh, I've had the privilege to witness once. So I'll try to do a good job emulating him. Uh, he's one of the board members of, of Consensus, and he's an, uh, um, been in crypto quite long, since 2012. He knows a lot of stuff, especially about the wallets and uh, security. So um, here's some points about personal data security. Uh, I, 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 when I talk about security, and, and I've made a video, a short video in Finnish about personal uh, security, what I normally want to uh, start, uh, start with is uh, non-disclosure. Right? I think the biggest security risk is telling people that you have cryptocurrencies, and especially, especially telling people how much you have cryptocurrencies, and showing people uh, you know, that you bought a Lambo and stuff like that, that will invite tragedy. And it has happened uh, to many people in the public already that have kept, them, kept their private keys carelessly and maybe boasted about um, their earnings or, or their uh, ownings, holdings on the social media. And then afterwards they got hacked or, or um, got hurt and, and uh, coerced to give their private keys and stuff like that. So very important, be uh, super careful if you uh, choose to invest, uh, w whom you disclose that information with. And if you, even, even if you are a non-zero-sum investor like myself, uh, do keep the amounts to yourself at least. That's still at least and the best thing you can do uh, in terms of security. And then of course there becomes this uh, whole issue of being your own bank, which is of course one of the main reasons why, why, why would you use uh, cryptocurrency to cut the middleman out and take personal responsibility. However, with responsibility comes uh, also kind of a danger. So uh, if you mess up, if you lose your private keys, if you um, send money to incorrect address, uh, it's on you. So there's no recourse, there's no Bitcoin or, well, some cryptocurrencies might have an actual office, but for example, Bitcoin and other decentralized assets, there's no office to go to and complain and get your money back. It's on you. So keep that in mind. Uh, personal responsibility in good and bad. Um, there's some uh, other precautions you may want to take when, when, and these apply to a lot of uh, internet services. So of course, when you use a computer, you want to be aware of uh, the risks associated with the uh, operating system. So that all the mainstream operating systems can be hacked, can be compromised, there, there might, may be uh, some kind of software that has installed itself and a key logger maybe that uh, attracts your uh, each and every key press. So uh, it's uh, useful to be aware of these uh, things. And uh, when you use password in an exchange, obviously you don't use the same uh, password for everywhere. And uh, hopefully you can use a password manager that does that for you, that is uh, protected with a super secure password that you only know. Things like this that apply for all internet security, really. Uh, of course, backups of your wallets, that's always a good idea. And uh, how the wallet security and the backup works is normally you will generate, and this is important, uh, you gotta generate the recovery seed yourself. If you, for example, uh, buy a used um, hardware wallet, such as Treasure or Ledger, and there has been these uh, scams that it comes with a pre-generated seed password, then immediately discard that device because it's compromised, or at least you have to reset it and, and examine if there's any like physical modifications. Because the seed will always, always be generated by you and you only, and you, nobody else should have uh, any way to find it out. Because the, how, then, then it wouldn't be trustless. Like you, if, if somebody creates the seed, they control your money. You don't control the money. And this same thing applies to exchanges. When you keep your money at the exchange, you don't own your money. The exchange owns it, just like you don't own your money in the bank. The, the bank owns it because it's not, 
if you have it in cash, I guess you could say that you own it, but of course you uh, expose yourself to the risks or that comes, comes with the fiat system as well. But if you own your own cryptocurrency, if you own your own private key, that means that nobody will ever be able to take it away if you take, uh, take good care of that. So that's something very important. Uh, yeah, the address verification, very important. So uh, one thing that I, I, normally I don't give recommendations, but I would say that if you're new and you have a, a kind of an important amount of money invested that you would rather not lose, then I, I, I would think a hardware wallet would be a good option, such as, such as a Trezor or a Ledger Nano, because it takes a lot of these uh, kind of like problems away because it takes care of your private key management if you have as long as you have access to your your device physical device so if somebody wants to hack it they would also have to have access to your device they would have to know your passcode as well so it takes a little bit of uh, trouble out of the equation for you and uh, um, paper wallets were excuse me paper wallets were mentioned earlier uh, while paper wallets can be extremely secure way to store your private keys, it's far from easy and, and e easy to handle for beginners because, like Aki mentioned, you essentially need to have an air-gapped computer, which means that the computer has a fresh installation of um, open-source software. Um, so Linux is pretty much your only option that you can uh, be sure that it's, it has been audited and, and you can check and verify that it's not uh, uh, tampered with and then you need to install um, the wallet from that without ever touching the internet and then you have to print it and, and all along take good care that there's no way that somebody could, uh, for example, take, uh, take control of your screen or, or something like that or look through your, um, over your so shoulder and then you can have a secure paper wallet but that's the reason why I don't recommend it to beginners is that it's very actually challenging to create a secure paper wallet. So keep that in mind as well. Yeah, there's the paradox that crypto, cryptos are online assets, but the safe, safest way to store is offline, of course, because it's uh, actually super easy to hack. Um, if, if somebody knows that you have a sizable amount of cryptocurrency, it's, it's, it's not hard to hack. Of course, you can take precautions and use VPN, but the best, the best way is uh, to just take, take out the equation of internet. Like, if you don't provide internet access to your private keys, it becomes very, very hard to steal. So here's another reminder, don't store your coins at an exchange. When you're trading, obviously you need to have a, some, some, but I would defer to the uh, thing I said earlier, how much money would you hold in your actual wallet? And I, I wouldn't hold any, any more than that in, in an exchange either for longer periods of time. Sure, it's convenient if you want to sell quickly, but also it's super inconvenient when the exchange gets hacked and you never see your money again. So that's something also to, uh, to keep in mind. Yeah, this one I like. Uh, this is something that most people, I would say, disregard. What is the weakest link in the security? And it's always the person, always the user. You might have the best uh, state-of-the-art quantum proof um, algorithm to protect and encrypt your funds and then there's a bandit who, who gets a five dollar wrench from the hardware store and beats you until you give up your codes. So that's a, called a five dollar wrench attack and it's very important to be aware of this and it has happened already and it will happen more and more especially if you disclose in public that you have some. And people have been kidnapped in, in Thailand for example, other countries as well I've heard. and. Uh, this has been done. So basically, what are you going to do when, when there's a stronger guy than you and he's beating you until you give up the codes? More often than not, you will give the codes. And one way to combat this is to use a hardware wallet, uh, actually, because, uh, for example, Treasure and Ledger both, uh, I think Ledger as well, uh, provides you an option to use a custom passphrase. And what, what I mean by that is you create a super long, hard to uh, crack um, passphrase that you it's easy for you to remember it can be a story or a limerick that is uh, 
something you can remember, and then you have another one. And each passphrase, you can have multiple, uh, each passphrase will open a different instance of the wallet, which is uh, disconnected from anything else. So let's say that uh, you, you are um, traveling, and somebody sees that you're traveling with the treasurer, they, they have the right to ask you to open it, or somebody does a $5 wrench attack and, and uh, makes you, forces you to open it, then this will provide you plausible deniability because there's absolutely no way for them to know how many wallets you have. So that's something to consider. You are the greatest uh, security risk. You can take all the measures, but if you are holding all the keys as well and you, um, there's a way to extract those keys from you, then most likely that will happen sooner or later. So here's some uh, wallets listed. I already mentioned the hardware wallets. Uh, Treasure is pretty good. Ledger has been used uh, successfully, and, and these uh, hardware wallets range from like 60, 60 to 100 euros around that mark. So I, I would say after you go over that amount of cryptocurrency, you might want to start considering actually to getting, a, getting one. And especially because uh, there's not that many um, companies that come up with this and, and manufacture these. Last time when there was a bull run, when the price went, went high, uh, actually it was uh, quite hard to get a hold of the hardware wallets. So something to keep in mind if there's going to be a huge interest and uh, the supply is not going to be able to catch up, so get yours early. Or you can use a mobile wallet, uh, software wallet. These all work well as long as you take care of your uh, private security and, and uh, keep in mind the risks. So here's uh, mentioned the tails. So that's the, the, the way that I mentioned that you can create a secure wallet. And uh, we, can, we can provide a link with the description later um, about these uh, different things that we talk about. So tails is, a, is an installation of Windows that is running from a USB uh, stick. And then you can use it to generate a clean installation of tails. So you have to double install and then you use this uh, btcaddress.org, and once you download the repositories, you, you can manually go through it or you can trust the signatures. Either way, you, you should verify that you have the actual package. But uh, the way I handled the issue of creating paper wallets is that I, I've chosen not to uh, do that, because for me, it's too much risk, but it, it can be a very effective way for, for a lot of people, but mostly for uh, maybe for people who have been around a little bit longer so they understand what it means. So uh, the other risks of storage, there can be a fire. If, if your private keys are at your home and there's a fire and it's burned to ash, then it's pretty much gone. Um, kidnapping was mentioned. Uh, may maybe uh, you get a head injury and you forget where you put it, or, or uh, simply you de uh, your demise comes a little bit earlier than you expected, and then your inheritance won't have any access. Uh, things to sure, certainly uh, to consider, and it doesn't matter how how young or healthy you are; anything can happen. So I th I urge you to take this seriously, and if you're thinking about uh, investing, then at least do it right from the beginning and and take care of all these precautions. So multi-signature is something that you may look into. This essentially means that it is. Uh, physically impossible for you to open the Bitcoin wallet by yourself and spend the funds. There needs to be another two or three people or, or uh, laptops or keys to open the, open the account, so to speak, to access the funds. And this can also be used together with the passphrases to pl provide you plausible deniability when there's actually, this is similar to the time lock of uh, like uh, used in the shops in case of robbery. So some of the funds will only be unlocked after a certain period of time and there's nothing any of the clerks can do about that. So that's again plausible deniability. All right, that's, uh, I tried to cover as much ground as I could. I'm not a not an security expert and unfortunately you had to hear it, hear it from me, but if you have any questions I will do my best to try and answer now. Yes. Oh, where's the chat box? Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, so one of the bases of 
cryptocurrencies is trust. Okay, but this way, aren't we moving our trust from like banks to the software developer? I mean, if something happens to the software, like this, the wallet, for example, I'm quite ignorant. So yeah, it's I'm not saying all really new for me, but I mean, I study security. So what happens if the software is bugged and someone steals money? Who ensures actually that? So which is the responsibility to give uh, to the like to the software developer? and to, the, to your own, because you are responsible for your own wallet, but what if the, the wallet is bugged? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And what, what happens, like this is, this is what cryptocurrencies are about. It's about pr uh, taking personal responsibility. And you're absolutely correct in that the trust will have to be shifted to the software developers and the code. And that's, that's where the saying, in code we trust, comes from. Uh, for, for Bitcoin at least. And I think that's one of the biggest points and the pros of the whole system. Because, yeah, it's not trustless, but you can cut the middlemen out, the third parties. What you tr have to trust then is consensus. So you have to trust that it's open source uh, code that is provided for everybody for, uh, free, free of charge to use. Anybody can contribute, anybody can start coding for, for Bitcoin, for example. And this, to me, uh, gives me the assurance that through game theory there's enough people who are interested and, and the, their um, wealth depends on it already. So, and there's so many smart people in the world as well who own, own the Bitcoin, so they have incentive to keep it running, to uh, contribute with good code. And uh, the lead developers, I'm sure, won't, uh, they are not working for money, they are working because they are building something that they believe in. So for me, I, I'm happy to uh, place the trust on the consensus. That doesn't mean any group of individuals or any single uh, developers, which is uh, why I think uh, most projects uh, don't have this edge over, over Bitcoin because most projects are centralized to, to some degree. They can be shut down because there is a father figure or there is a, you know, like Satoshi Nakamoto, the best thing he did for Bitcoin was, was to step away and never, never to be found again. And that's, I, th I think that's the reason why it has uh, blossomed the way it has, I would say. Yeah, good question. Did I, did I manage to answer it at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, right. this is a really good question because it's like believing in the like in the, all all the people, not only like certain coders, right? But all the yeah. people, yeah, all yeah, the community. Yeah, for sure. yeah that's really good. Yeah.